Alright guys, our next unit is on the human body and we have to focus on the different systems and their functions and how they interact with each other. Before we talk about the different systems, we have to talk about a term called homeostasis. This is defined as the body's ability to maintain an internal balance despite changes in the external environment. So no matter what's going on around you, your body has the ability to change things to kind of adapt to what's happening. So for example, if you look at the temperature, when you are outside playing sports during summer, you're really hot, and so in order for your body not to overheat, it releases sweat to cool you down. Same thing during winter, when you're cold, you shiver, it's just causing your muscles to have friction and create heat so that your body does not get super cold. Um, all of our body systems work together in maintaining that constant internal environment. And when the balance is disrupted and something happens or something's not working correctly, then your body systems aren't going to function properly and human health can suffer. So if you look down here at the bottom, um, this one I just talked to you about how when you're cold you shiver and when you are hot, you sweat to keep that internal balance or the same body temperature no matter what's going on outside of your body. You can compare it to your house. So in the summertime, when your house is hot, you can cut a fan on and it'll cool you down. Or in the wintertime, whenever it's cold outside and your house is cool, you turn the heater on to get it hot and keep an internal temperature. This picture just shows you a bunch of different ways that your body maintains homeostasis. The first deals with the skin, and whenever um, we sweat, that's our body releasing a liquid to cool us down whenever we get too hot. Um, and then evaporation of that water from our skin helps regulate our body temperature. Um, the next one shows a picture of the kidneys. And they maintain a nice water balance inside so that there's not too much water or too little water inside of the body. The next one is blood getting distributed throughout the body um, and carrying heat to keep that constant temperature. This one is our skeletal muscles contracting, so opening and closing, that releases heat as well. This is the pancreas that regulates our blood sugar so that we don't spike and go too high or drop and go too low. And then this is part of the brain that regulates temperature inside of the body and also changes in pressure. So the first system we're going to talk about is the skeletal system. The function of the skeletal system is to provide support for movement and then also to protect all the organs underneath. So if you look in this picture right here, you see the rib cage, which I've just circled. That rib cage is there to protect all of the organs underneath of it. So the skeletal system is our system that has bones, and it gives us the framework for the body, and it protects all of our organs. How it interacts with other systems, the first and easiest one is the muscular system. And with the muscular system, that's for movement. So the muscular system connects to all of our bones in our body to help the body move. The next one is an interaction with the respiratory system. And the respiratory system brings in oxygen for us and removes its carbon dioxide from the bone cells. And of course, bones are part of the skeletal system. The skeletal system interacts with the circulatory system because um, the circulatory system helps carry the oxygen and nutrients um, to the body and it removes waste from the bone cells. So those bone cells have to get oxygen and nutrients, but they also have to have something to carry away their waste, and that's what the circulatory system does. Then we have the digestive system, and the digestive system is a system that provides nutrients for the bones to actually grow and repair. The next system is the muscular system. Um, this system's main function is to enable movement of the body and organs. So whenever the body is moving, that's your muscular system. And this picture shows you that there's three different types of muscles. Smooth muscle, skeletal muscle, and then cardiac muscle. And cardiac means heart, so these are muscles near the heart. For interactions, it interacts with the skeletal system like we just talked about because it connects um, to the muscles that help move the body. Um, it interacts with the respiratory system because our respiratory system brings in oxygen and removes carbon dioxide from our muscle cells. It interacts with the circulatory system because it brings oxygen and nutrients and removes waste from muscle cells. And then it interacts with the digestive system because it provides nutrients, um, the digestive system does, it provides nutrients for our muscles to actually do the work that they need to do to move the body. 
Our next system and one of the most important systems is the circulatory system. This is our system that is our transporter. It transports materials to and from the cells. When I say transporting materials, this could be oxygen, it could be nutrients that the body needs, it also transports waste, okay? So this is the system that involves hearts and blood vessels and arteries and all the things associated with blood. So one of the key questions that we need to answer with the circulatory system is what would happen if the blood in our, in our body was not moving? So if we did not have blood flowing to every part of our body, how would that affect us? Well, first off, if your organs aren't getting blood, then they're not getting the nutrients from the food that you eat because blood carries nutrients. Um, also, your organs can't get oxygen from the air that you breathe because blood brings oxygen to the body. So if the blood is not moving throughout the body, all the organs aren't getting the oxygen that they need. Um, waste would not be able to leave your body because the transporter, a.k.a. blood, is not hitting every part of the body and being able to carry the waste to leave. Um, heat would not be redistributed to your body. And then hormones would not be distributed to your body. For interactions, the circulatory system really it can interact with any system. Um, its main job is a transporter. So it transports oxygen from the respiratory system. It transports waste from all the cells for every system. And then also nutrients from the digestive system to every other system in the body. So the circulatory system is one of the key systems that interacts with every other system. It connects all of the systems together. And this is a picture just of blood flow um, starting up here at the top. Um, you can see that, hang on. Okay, sorry. Um, starting at the top here, you see that blood flow happens from head to toe. So in the center of the picture here is the main heart. Um, the heart has different chambers. It has um, different types of oxygenated blood versus deoxygenated blood. And it carries the blood, the nutrients, the oxygen, the waste all throughout the body to where it needs to be. Next is the digestive system, and its goal is to break down food that we eat and absorb those nutrients and also to eliminate solid waste. I'm super sad because the poop emoji is in the wrong space. It's supposed to be right there. So it only gets rid of solid waste. There's a separate system that gets rid of liquid waste, okay? So digestive system breaks down our food, gives us the nutrients that we need, and gets rid of the solid waste. Um, the urine or the liquid waste comes from the excretory system. Now, the digestive system is going to deal with your small intestine, your large intestine, your stomach, um, and then where it releases out by the rectum and the anus. And this picture just shows you the track of food. It goes from the mouth down into the esophagus, okay, and then into the stomach, where then it then trickles down into all of your intestines, and then out the large intestine and down through the rectum and the anus. For interactions, the digestive system interacts with the circulatory system because all the nutrients that the digestive system has absorbed, the circulatory system picks up and then distributes them to all the cells in the body. Um, and then every single cell, I mean every single system in the body uses the nutrients that the digestive system gives us. So this is one of those systems that interacts with every system as well. The next system is the respiratory system and this system's main goal is to take in oxygen and release carbon dioxide, which is considered a waste. Um, and the different organs for this system are your lungs, your trachea, alveoli, your bronchioles. Um, all those are different parts of your respiratory system. A key question that we answer with this system is why would smoking shorten your life? So we know that smoking deals with inhaling and breathing in um, smoke and tobacco products, but why exactly would that shorten your life? And the answer is because at least by 10 years, smoking can shorten your life because of A, lung cancer. So most of the time, smoking leads to lung cancer, which is the most common form of cancer caused by smoking. Um, also, cigarette smoke, which comes from smoking, contains tons of chemicals that's going to interfere with your body's method of filtering air. So where your lungs um, usually filter the air 
then they're going to start being faulty and there's not going to be clean areas on your lungs and instead they're start going to get black and tar and not work like they are supposed to. Um, and that smoke irritates the lungs and leads to overproduction of mucus, which you do not want. Um, another question we have to look at is why would you perform CPR on an unresponsive person? So if someone is not breathing, what, what is the point of doing CPR? And the answer is, is if you are doing CPR, you are pumping oxygen-rich blood from yourself into the other person to keep that oxygen flowing in their body until the heart can jump back in and start doing its job and distribute it. Um, the last part is why is it a bad idea to see how long you can hold your breath? Um, and that's because your body needs oxygen. If you are preventing your body from taking in oxygen, then you are hurting all of your cells. This picture shows you the respiratory system and the flow of air um, coming in through the mouth and the trachea and then down into the different bronchial tubes and into the different lungs. You'll see these little um, air sacs at the end of the lungs. Um, those are called alveoles, and in those specific air sacs is where the oxygen goes down, and that's where the exchange happens for oxygen to be absorbed and carbon dioxide to leave. The respiratory system interacts with the circulatory system because our respiratory system brings in oxygen, and the circulatory system is the system that distributes that oxygen to all the cells in the body, and it also picks up the waste from the lungs um, and removes it from the respiratory system. And also, it's important to remember that all of the cells in our body need oxygen to survive, so this also interacts with all other systems. The nervous system is a system that's main job is to detect information from the outside environment and control our body. So this is kind of like um, if we were comparing it to the cells and the organelles, this would kind of be like the nucleus of a cell. The nervous system for our body is our system that tells us what to do. It's controlling our every movement um, and this has to do with your brain and your spine and all of your nerves. The nervous system controls all of our body processes by using electrical impulses through a network of nerves. For interactions, it interacts with the skeletal system because the skeletal system protects the brain and the spinal cord from injury. Um, it interacts with the muscular system because the muscular system protects all of our nerves, which send impulses down to the rest of our body from our brain. It also controls all of the functions of every other system in the body. This is the boss of the body. So it interacts with every system and it helps maintain homeostasis. Our next system is the excretory system, um, which is also known as the urinary system. They mean the same thing. Um, and the focus of this system is to remove liquid waste, such as urine from the body. So how it works is the urine or the liquid waste um, end up traveling down these little tubes called ureters. And then they end up in this area right here called the bladder. And whenever your bladder is too full, it gives you the sensation that you need to use the restroom. And then you do so that you empty out your bladder and get rid of the liquid waste. It interacts with other systems, um, specifically the circulatory system, because your circulatory system is bringing blood that needs to be filtered through the kidneys um, to remove that cellular waste from all the systems. And it also interacts with the skeletal system, because our skeletal system has the bones in the framework that protects our kidneys from damage. The next system is the endocrine system, and this system controls many of our body processes by means of chemicals and hormones, okay? This is your system that releases hormones to keep an internal balance. It helps so that you don't have too much testosterone or you don't have too much estrogen. It keeps an internal balance by releasing these hormones and chemicals. Um, it uses chemical messages called hormones, which are released into our blood and carried to different parts of the body to regulate our body processes. It interacts with the circulatory specifically because the circulatory system is the system that brings all of the hormones from the endocrine system to all the different parts of the body to maintain homeostasis. It also is a big interactor with the reproductive system um, because reproductive hormones such as testosterone and estrogen are released by the endocrine system. And remember that testosterone 
is specific to males, and estrogen is the hormone that mostly females have. Um, the reproductive system, its main goal is to procreate. It has the male and the female sex cells, um, and its job is to create more of its kind. So females are the ones with the ovaries and eggs, and males are the one with the testes and sperm. So on the left-hand side, you see um, the things that create the sex cells. So for females, that is an ovary. And in the ovary is where um, you will find the eggs. And for males, the testes is where you will find the sperm. Um, testes releases sperm, ovaries release eggs. And then on the right-hand side, you see stuff that is specific to females. Um, you see the first word being placenta. And that is something that um, is almost like a big wall of tissue that helps connect mom and baby so that the hormones and everything that the baby needs is coming straight through from mom. And then you also see a uterus, and the uterus is like the thick lining that closes and, and holds where the baby is growing at. The reproductive system interacts with other systems, specifically the endocrine system, um, because the endocrine system secretes reproductive hormones, which is the testosterone and estrogen, um, that are specific to the reproductive system. And then the circulatory system distributes reproductive hormones within the body. Next is the immune system, and its job is to protect us um, from foreign invaders like bacteria and viruses. With this system, we're going to talk about white blood cells, T cells, B cells. These are all specific types of cells that help fight off harmful things to our body. And it's our immune system that we rely on to keep us healthy. It interacts with the circulatory system because the circulatory system has the blood that carries our white blood cells and T cells all around the body so that we can fight off these invaders. Um, and it's our system that protects all other cells and all other systems by attacking bacteria and viruses to keep us healthy. The last system is the integumentary system, and this is our system that deals with skin and hair and nails. Um, this main function of the system is to act as a barrier. It is a, a protector of the body from the outside world. So that includes your skin, which is the largest organ on your body. Um, hair, nails, glands, nerves, all of these are part of the integumentary system. The integumentary system helps to retain body fluids. It protects us against diseases. It eliminates waste products via sweating. And it regulates our body temperature to help maintain homeostasis. It works with all other systems by protecting it from the outside world. We have this big coating over our bodies, which is skin, that protects all of our other systems from whatever is in the outside world. It also interacts with the excretory or urinary system by removing cellular waste through sweating. And then it works with the nervous system to help maintain homeostasis in situations when you're too hot or too cold so that you, you shiver or you sweat to release or either take in fluids. If you have any questions, please see me in class.